Admiral's Log, date December 1st, 1910. The blockade is finally over. Months of valuable productivity and trade, however, have been lost because of this British blockade. This has, of course, also impacted the Navy. We've had to restrict ships to port, research has ceased entirely, and crew training was at a low level. Finally, we can be a little bit more loose with our purse strings. Especially research and crew training need to improve drastically. How long this breather will last is unclear. For all we know, the British are just doing some maintenance on their ships before coming back full strength. Our navy isn't ready for that yet. We'll have to be cautious with our ships and take calculated risks. And yes, such a risk was taken by the captain of the Rune, as he threw his ship against the British heavy cruiser after his weapons proved largely ineffective against her. It worked. The cruiser went down. This is, however, 1910, not the Middle Ages. I want to move past having to use ramming tactics to inflict damage to enemy warships. I hope and expect our new ships to fix this issue. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 5. The blockade is finally over. Well, for now, German's empire's economy becomes stabilized. This means that I have at least, well, I had a bit of money coming in. And here we go again. My warship tonnage is still far less than the British. Oh, I actually hoped that this was going to last, but no joy. We'll just have to keep crushing the British fleet. But it seems that we're actually doing worse rather than better. I'm not sure how the British are capable of fitting this many ships this quickly. But it's getting pretty ridiculous. I can see that they have laid down a new ship, the Lord Nelson of the Caesar class. And some other stuff in December 1910. Um, I have completed some repairs of heavy cruisers, but that is about it. Let's go and look for the enemy and see if I can cripple, well, ideally something the size of a battleship. What do we have here? We have two destroyers of mine versus two destroyers of theirs. This is going to be a knife fight. I need to save my transports. My already crippled, well, economy is not really looking to lose six more transports. Contact west. Full ahead flank, 32 knots. Let's go. Let's go and bag us some British destroyers. Sadly, the British destroyers don't really actually contribute that much to naval power or to, to sea projection or power projection is the, the official term. So they're sadly not really going to do that much damage to the British capability to blockade me. On the other hand, if I sink them now, they will not be able to sink my battleships. Because those are still at risk of getting attacked by destroyers. And here we go. We have found a, sorry, a British destroyer and they're awfully close. Our spotting without radar is still very limited. And this means that these guys are popping up at about 3.3 kilometers range. Now, ideally, ideally, I'm going to just jam a couple of torpedoes down their throat at extremely short range. And just call it a day. Because I think that is by far the best way of dealing with these destroyers. So the 9 is going to go after that one. And the 6 is going to go after the other. And this one, ah, there we go. I know that these DDs only pack a very, very low amount of torpedoes, so they're probably empty. The Liberty has no further torpedoes. They're still pretty capable gunboats with those four-inch guns of theirs. They carry one, two, three. But beyond that, I don't think they're that dangerous. Although it only takes a few of those four-inch hits to deal damage to my ships. Turning circle, 434 at top speed. How fast are you going? Top speed. Okay, six, turn to port. The Liberty is coming straight at you. Um, this is not a good torpedo angle. Because if they zig or zag, I completely miss my shot. This is a little better. Torpedo tubes turning. 
Start starboard. Come on, 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 come on. This is no good. No good. New target. New target. The Shell Drake. Let's see if I can do that one. V9 has taken some light damage, but nothing I'm concerned with yet. Torpedoes away. Again. Hold off on the last salvo. Do it. Do it now. Because the Shell Drake's dodging everything. Stern launcher. I'm banking on you. It's... Yep, it's tossed out the torpedoes. There we go. The Shell Drake should be dead. One, two, three. What? That's it? Nineteen-inch torpedo? What? Sure, the Shell Drake is still flooding, but the damage is almost non-existent. This is insane. The amount of damage that these smaller ships, and it goes for destroyers as well as torpedo boats, the amount of damage that these boys can take is crazy. A 19-inch torpedo should cut a destroyer of 1,100 tons about in half, if not worse. Sheldrake is losing speed. You know what? I might just need to deliver the, fin uh, the, the final blow to the Sheldrake instead. Let's just slow you down a touch. And see if we can pop the Sheldrake. Sheldrake is still benefiting from her momentum. Back to full. But that momentum... Hmm. Fire. Just the stern launcher, if I can make that happen. I'm gonna try and get the bow out of a good firing angle and just use the stern launcher. Like that. Steady! Fuck, overturned. Oh, such a knife fight, this one. So, so close range. And here comes the Liberty again. Meanwhile, Sheldrake is still flooded. Partially. Just insufficiently so. They'll need another serving of torpedoes. Okay, fine. We're in a decent spot. Please make it work. Oh, bow on. Really? <coughs> Not good. Go on. I'll try and stop dancing around with the ship. There we go. Shell Drake turns hard to port. Two... Two torpedoes? One. Wow. Oh, fuck me. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yep, that happened. Ah. <sighs> It is not a good day to be a destroyer captain. Friendly fire incident. And the Sheldrake, despite taking another torp, survived. Not only that, but her buoyancy didn't increase at all. What are you guys making these ships out of? Many bulkheads? And I have maximum bulkheads, and I die. <laughs> okay, well, I deserved that. After losing my destroyer, to my own destroyer. 
Just hope that the nine can take down the shell drake, so we at least trade sort of one for one. They're a million cheaper. Wow. You're a little deep in the water there, buddy. You okay? This is not really what these destroyers were designed to do, sadly. My DDs were more designed as battleship killers or capital ship killers. Because they have such awful gun position. The torpedoes are the mainstay of this weapon. Of this ship type. Come on, could you please die so I at least get some... Something for my trouble. She's flooding. Kill it with fire. Thank you. That's one down. Now we're just going to camp out for a little bit. And wait for the torpedoes to come back online. And then we're going to go after the Liberty. What a terrible fight this was. After being unable to find the remaining destroyer, I just had to call it a day. Um, why exactly this cost me this many victory points, I do not understand. Because, sure, my ships are more expensive, but does that mean that they get that many more victory points when we traded one for one? All my transports survived. I don't see what the problem is, and I do not consider this a defeat. I seriously disagree with the game here. Power projection, 63,968. Hmm. Lovely. And I'm losing transports again. I've had to punch my transport capacity up to max, just in order to keep my transports, well, getting rebuilt after everybody keeps taking them down. Research is still non-existent, so I'm going to have to just make do with the ships I have. As I'm not going to get any new tech. Look at these guys build ships like there's no tomorrow. The British have created a new design. The Drake-class heavy cruiser. As well as something else. They laid down the Laurel class of DDs. They're building a Drake. An Abukir from the... I think the Drake class, another destroyer, and a light cruiser. How are you fording or... Why, hmm. Sorry, I'm in a bit of a loss. How are they funding all of that shit? Of course, them blockading me is not helping my navy, but it seems that they have a ton more funding than I do. Not even by a small margin, just massive amounts of money. Alright, let's see if I can deal at least some damage against the ships that we can find here. Now, there was some criticism of using smaller guns, but I don't really get it, because 2-inch guns are a very decent weapon against something as small as a destroyer. So, people were, well, critiquing the choice of using 2-inch guns, but the 2-inch guns, at short range, with a really high rate of fire, can immediately start flooding a destroyer like that, because they have no armor. And once they're flooded, they're easy kills for the bigger guns. If I would just use a 7-inch, or, I don't know, mainly, or only potentially 8-inch guns or 9-inch guns, it really wouldn't work. Because it simply would miss the target. Oh my god, don't... No. This is some sort of blooper episode. Everything that could be going wrong is going wrong. My destroyer is torping theirs. I need those torpedoes to get rid of those cruisers of theirs. Not like this. Not like this. Now, let's have a look at what gun did what, shall we? 216 damage, 169, and 135. For a 2-inch gun, that is not bad. It's the smallest caliber in the game. 
But the Thisbe is having a bad time with it. Although their anti-flooding capability is extraordinary. Come on. Look at him recover. Incredible. Now, I know that there's two more heavy cruisers around. And I think that they're about here. Yeah, there they are. I'm going to try and use the V9 to find the convoy, because that's what I'm out here to kill. That's what I need dead. In the meanwhile, I need this destroyer dead. That's a serious list you've developed there, Sunshine. Boom. That does it. Now, go find me a convoy. A little while later, I'm in pretty much exactly the position that I want to be in. The Mecklenburg and the Princess Wilhelm are engaging the Cressy and as of, as of yet unidentified heavy cruiser, the powerful, there we go. While my destroyer has snuck by the position of the heavy cruisers. And this means that the V9 is going to be capable, even with her small guns, to pick off these transports. Now, this is just one. But there ought to be more than that. So we're just, there we go. We're just going to let these guys fight it out. For a while. <laughs> now the V9 suddenly becomes way more interesting of a target for the heavy cruisers. But sadly, I don't think they can hit it very well. Not at five kilometers out. And that means that we can open fire against the restless and whatever other transports you might have. There's five of them, and I need to sink 75%. So that shouldn't be too hard to do. This is probably going to take me a long... What the? The damn transport is shooting back with a three-inch gun. Ugh, before long, I'm going to have to use torpedoes against them. I really do not want to. Let's turn a little more so I can get the two inches to fire. Yeah, both the Restless and this one are armed. This one too? Yeah, they're all armed. Lovely. In that case, I'm just going to go for the primary objective. Sink as many transports as possible, 75%. Because I need to make sure that the British reduce their shipping capacity. They're too powerful. They're too strong. They're too efficient when it comes to shipping stuff. And as we have seen by the incredible rate at which they're building their navy, they sure have no problem funding everything. So if I can hit them in the purse, then uh, hopefully that's going to make it a bit easier to break this blockade. How are you doing? Oh, slight damage, but nothing too serious. V9 is enjoying some target practice against the TRX, the crane, and something unknown. Look at this transport. Almost entirely on fire. Everything's burning. Come on. Take the hint. They're not taking the hint. Okay, uh, in that case, allow me to demonstrate some more. 
use the stern torpedo launcher. Okay, I'm starting to take a bit too much damage here. This is slight overkill, but I need these transports eliminated. Yeah, bang, you're dead. Oh crap, I'm flooding. I need more. Kill the Argyle, ignore the menace. And get the heavies to go after the TRX. That transport there needs to go. What are you guys doing overall? Oh, you've actually done quite a bit of damage against the Cressy. Nice work. Nice work. I better not hear any reports of the Mecklenburg getting hit by friendly fire. I'm going to be very annoyed if that happens. Yeah, a good amount of fire going off. Very nice. Standard bulkheads. So firefighting capability is reduced. Crew losses are going to be pretty extreme here. The X sinks. Very good. Bingo. Job done. Okay, target the Menace. Let's see what we can do with these heavy cruisers. Unless I want to end the fight here. Because they're leaving, and I'm I'm okay with that. I need to carefully shepherd my ships and make sure they survive. So you're going to disengage as long as you can. We'll have the Mecklenburg engage the transport. Now, let's get rid of this transport, shall we? It's the last of their transports. Even though the mission's already officially done, I can still get the kill on this guy. And then I can disengage. What are you shooting back at? A heavy cruiser. Okay, good. That means you're at least not taking shots at the destroyer. So we came out of this with a couple of transports killed, a destroyer killed, and a heavy cruiser heavily damaged. Well, that's not a bad result. I could make that work. Go on. Bye-bye. And battle. So, that's a victory. But what a blooper of a fight that was. Okay, guys, that's all I'm uh, going to do for this episode. My voice is really not enjoying these longer episodes, or at least an episode longer than this yet. Uh, hopefully soon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon for more.